Hey team, welcome to Inside the Movie Photographer with Jason Boland. Today I've got Greg Dyro. Greg is the man behind our images in the film industry. He's been running labs for as long as I can remember, well certainly as long as I've been in the industry for, and um, whenever we've had a problem, he's our go-to guy. Now Greg was uh, went to school in Maine at the College of Art. He discovered photography in the fifth grade through the magic of the darkroom, same as what I did at school. He's, he was a photographer's assistant in the 80s. He worked for Wolf Camera for 15 years as a lab tech, um, general manager of the photo lab, director of one of the biggest labs, Warner Brothers Photo Lab, and now he's uh, at Digital Fusion uh, doing new business development. And I've been with DF now for the last couple of years with uh, many of my projects, and I've got to say, they're pretty damn good. Hey, I'm going to bring in Greg because uh, he's a good guy. Hey. hey, Greg, how you doing? Hey, good, good. How are you? Hey, man, we were just talking about this before, that you've been in my life and my career for 25 years or more, and um, and we've never really met. I mean, we only know each other through emails or a very quick phone call over the years. Yeah, it's it's really funny because it, it literally my my first office at Warner Brothers, I actually printed a picture of yours from the Matrix, and it was huge behind my desk, and it sat there for many many years at Warner Brothers. And I, you're right, I, I'd never actually talked to and met you, but I knew you. <laughs> That's funny. That was in the dojo, right? That that image. Yes, the dojo shot. It was. I needed. I wanted something, it was Hollywood, so I needed something intimidating behind me. So I have um, <laughs> Morpheus and Neo about to, uh, you know, in there, the, that that pose, that that still shot from the film. But it was I can still, film. I it can still do it. Yes, whatever you call that. <laughs> um, and there was a transparency, if I remember correctly. Um, yes. And, um, and we had it um, printed very, very large, and it sat for a long time behind my desk. So. Oh man! I mean, you've come through. You've seen all the changes um, in our industry, and and I remember in the early days of breaking into digital um, at the lab that I almost had the feeling that um, the labs didn't know what to quite what to do with it. I mean, when I did, um, I was one of the first to do a film completely digital, um, and I, there'll be like twenty of the guys tell me they were first um but i know i was one of the first but on peter pan and um we had to fight tooth and nail to um to make sure that it that i only shot digital and that was with you know betty mm -hmm. einbinder from universal she backed me big time on it but um and now look at it i could not imagine shooting film could you imagine no having to deal with that anymore there's a few people that are doing film and it's like i i don't know i'm like Film is nice, and I love film. I, I grew up with film, and I did film, but I don't miss the dust. I don't miss the scratches. I don't miss the delicate nature of it and the control. I have so much control now that I, yeah. I, I had it before, chemically, yeah. you know, but nowhere near the way I have it now. So I, I love film, but I don't, I don't miss it. I love photography. So Yeah, you, well, that's – there you go. And, um, you know – it's uh, it's certainly it, it's opened up a complete new world for us. You know, I mean, I used to be so disappointed that by the time my images actually got to Australia for um, for opening day, there would it would be like the tenth dupe. It would go from you guys who did a perfect dupe, then it would go to all the distribution centers for you know for the studio, and they would do their own dupes, and they would send them out to you know some local lab. And, you know, you could have a single dupe would be a 10th generation. And I had one of them say about my Matrix photo, about a Matrix photo, oh, we couldn't use very many because they were out of focus. And it was like, oh, well, uh, actually, they weren't out of focus. It was bad dupes that yes. you guys had done, not not you guys' as labs because right. yours were always perfect. Well, yeah, that 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 that's one of the issues is the um... – you know, we would make large two and a quarter, 70 millimeter dupes of, of the 35 millimeter transparencies. And then those get would get duped by somebody else somewhere further down the line. And you're right, they got softer and softer. And then that's all I see sometimes now. Sometimes I'll see 
print somewhere. And I'm like, oh, this is horrible. It's from a dupe. It's a print from a dupe from a dupe. And it's the only thing that somebody has, or or maybe a studio. That's all a studio still has. That drives me crazy. Yep. <laughs> no, I'm with you. Uh, the kids don't understand it, what they had, how they had it so good, you know. And um, I think that's uh, one of the reasons why the older photographers uh, have such long activity because um, there's not much that can throw them off the path. And it's not to say that there's not great photographers on the way through because there certainly is, but there's something to be said about the about some of the guys that have stayed around through all these different changes. But um, hey, so Greg, do us a favor because I'd like to know. Once I've shot that roll of film, or in these days, once I've loaded up that hard drive every few days and sent it to you guys, what is the process? What happens from at that point on? Well, two, two things that happen in, in the old days with with film, we would we would look at the film. Well, we process the film actually first, and there's some parallel things with digital now. There's a processing aspect, which means we'll take the raw files, we'll process them out to JPEGs, color correct, make sure things look good. And then from there, in the old days, we would pull out slides. We'd pull out you know, closed eyes or that shot of the trunk or that shot of your tripods that wasn't necessary. Um, and then kind of edit it down with the Junky stuff gone. Digital is that way too. We don't try to tell everybody that we get rid of a few things, but we get rid of some stuff because there's some things that you don't need. And then from there, it's it's pushed out to um, the photo editors, which is the next step in the process. So we, as a lab, tend to be that middle person between you, wow. the photographer, the photo editor, the design firm, the people making the posters. We kind of give it to these people, they pick it, then we give it to the design people, they work on it, comes back to us, something gets retouched, it gets picked and used in another spot. So we're, we're at the center of a, of a big web, essentially. Yeah, so I mean, uh, your filing system is, uh, is essential to the whole working of the, of the machine, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and in, in, in the old days, we would obviously number a, a, a roll and then there was frame number on the roll. And, and now it's just a continuous numbering of, of you know, from frame one all the way to frame 15,000 or, you know, 50,000 or something like that. Uh, you're and, talking about me there, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, digital has created an opportunity to shoot more, <laughs> most definitely. Yeah, in some ways, I've found myself lately shooting less since I've gone to mirrorless. Mm hmm um, with the DSLR, I shot more, but with the action, I keep a lot in because, as you know, um, there could be five different elements in a in a one sheet from an action movie. You know, it could be a leg, could be an arm, right? Um, drop a face in. So, um, I try and give you guys as as uh, as much selection to go through. But I, I am told I overshoot a lot, but don't tell well, me. It's easy to do because it's it's well monetarily it's not there it used to be a monetary thing you were you were oh it costs money to shoot another roll or physically i did not have another roll with me i had to go back yeah. to the trailer to get more film and the so I, I had to be a little but i find that um that people are conscious much more so as you said with mirrorless now you're seeing that image um even with DSLRs, you're seeing that image later that day on your computer. Yeah, but you just feel like you've seen it with the with the digital. It's really quite liberating. Um, you know, it's it's opened up um, a lot more space to go and edit between takes and, and scenes and stuff like that. And, um, you know, you're, you're talking about you guys doing your edits and, and things like that. And um, I'm, I know David James was one of the one of the main guys that started that whole trend and you know i love it it's it's you know mad max and stuff like that mm -hmm. it's like i have a say in how it looks and to the point which the filmmakers take on some of our edits uh to use in their own finished product which is you know really cool and and i'm sure it makes your life a little bit easier too when the photographer does a select and then you can pick images around it right Oh yes, and and I've definitely seen it. And seen it. I mean, specifically on a, on a on a David James note on Minority Report, um, David was shooting 
these rocket packs and people were flying in rocket <laughs> packs. And and we ended up there was no there was no CG there was no computer graphic stuff that had been done for the film yet. So David mm -hmm. needed to show it, so we added some, you know, flames and whatever for the rocket packs. Well, he ended up showing that people well, it ended up influencing how they did this the CGI of the rocket packs because they liked what well, David did so much. It, it wasn't exactly what David did, but David contributed to it because he was there on set, he knew what he wanted, he knew the director, he knew the DP, he knew the light, and this is what it would look like. And it was it was an amazing process, and it still sticks in my mind sitting in that darkened lab, seeing those shots and finding out, hey, that influenced the film. I agree with that. Absolutely, it does. You know, we do have, um, in some respects, more power than what people think. And, um, you know, we're storytellers and, and we're there to collaborate with the filmmakers and we should be offering things up. I mean, I do most of my editing in my own time. I don't, uh, if you know, it's up to me whether I, how much edit time I put into it. And uh, there's a lot that have started to do it now, and I think it's really worthwhile. And, you know, just things like straightening horizons and mm -hmm. verticals and stuff like that, it's, um, you know, sometimes that can get missed and and then we see it later published and it's kind of like, well, you know, you could have helped the guys out because they weren't on the set where you were at and they didn't know that that was there. And, you know, and a lot of guys don't leave notes. We had a, there was a classic example of that. We were doing a film for a director and and it was very very warm very yellow and you know this from matrix with, with the green of the matrix and the yeah. normal but it was very warm and it was like well we had no idea and so we were color correcting out the warmth making it look really good and then the photographer came in and said like, oh no 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 and he said this is what it should look like oh and then when i actually saw the film it was very golden, golden hour, but it was in the studio. And I was like, oh, our still photography shots look exactly like the film because we had those that information back via the DP to the photographer. This is what the look is going to be. So that was yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't think that um, uh, in the – I don't know what it's like now, but in the past I don't think there was uh, enough photographers that – understood the relationship that they should have with the lab and uh it's it's a very important relationship because you know as you were saying you're the middle you're the middleman and uh you know once you're getting these images out it's 12 months after we've shot them mm -hmm. and uh if if the photographer is not giving notes and they see something that's not not quite right well i think they've only got themselves to blame and and um and well done to you guys. You've never, you, I've never let, been let down actually. And as you know, I'm not that fussy about color. I'm kind of like, oh, whatever. But, um, but uh, everything else, yeah, you really look after. So, well, I know we've, right, we've so, had year, years of that. Not not just with you, but with other people with Canon, with Nikon, and all the cameras. Every now and there were glitches, and it was like, yeah, we had, the, we had what is going on with this glitch? And we're talking to Nikon. We're talking back to you, or we're talking to Canon. We're where we've got this banding issue. Why these these shirts are are causing this moray pattern? And it was we've never experienced that before coming from film. So yeah, there's been been some fun, and I think things that you've done have caused Nikon to change stuff that they've made. We've encountered that with with other, with Canon, Nikon across the board, where we've said to the reps and we've said to that, and we know eventually it gets back to Japan, and eventually it. it it does change something. Nikon's very good like that. As you know, I'm a Nikon ambassador. Oh, it's down the bottom there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, uh, they listen to everything that, that we have to say and, you know, things that can be implemented, they do. I forgot about them more on the, oh, yeah. um, on the shirts. That was, um, that was uh, pre D 800 days, I think. Yeah. Was, yeah. So it's got to be seven or eight years ago, which isn't that long. When you think about cinema's been around for you know what hundred and well Nikon's been I haven't got the shirt on but they've been around for over a hundred years so we should have a look at some of your photos that you've picked now I got to say Greg I really love what you've done is like you picked out a few photos that have stuck in your mind over the years from photographers and just um, just that that you know all the years that you've worked in the industry these images mm -hmm. have still stayed fresh for you right Oh yes Oh yes start first with um 
with your lab. Oh yes, this is this is the Warner Brothers Photo Lab. Um, the the big building is actually the scenic art department, and that's where they used to do the really large paintings, uh, the background paintings when they did it. Oh, rock! When they did it by painting them, and it was a, instead of green screen. Yes, and that whole that giant building would house gigantic canvases that would go up and down and and they painted and then we're you can just barely see that red car and right above that there's a solar yep. power solar panels yeah we're actually down in the basement <laughs> the oh, really in the basement and that and everybody, was in the basement and everybody was like greg you don't have a window in your office and my new office doesn't have a window and i said I've never had a window. I've always been in dark rooms all my life. I've never had a window. <laughs> that was okay. I love it. I love it. It's a building from 1935. There's, there's the, the, you go into that door and then down a set of stairs. So we're, we're down below in the basement. So it's a beautiful, beautiful building. I, I went there during Diane's sponsor days, but I don't uh -huh. know if I went to the lab. There you are. This is when I first was at the lab. We we had a we had a counter that was like a like a service counter at an auto dealership <laughs> where you picked up your parts. <laughs> yeah, well there you go. That's all the um that's all the print drawers behind you, right? Yep, yep. It was flat files of the store prints and an aerial of the and we had a cash register. We did we we had a one hour we had a one hour lab. We did processing for the whole lot for their their personal film. In oh, fact, really? Oh, yeah. We did personal film. In fact, I found out when I did research, we used to do James Dean's personal film all the time. No way. Yep. He came to the lab and he he processed his film at the lab and printed. Because he was quite a photographer, right? Yes, yes. He he shot quite a bit. So, but I was I was quite impressed to find out that that James Dean actually used the lab way way back in the day. So. I knew I was going to love meeting you online like this. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> oh my gosh! There's the so This, it again is, this is lab. actually this is pre before when I came. I, I redid the entire front of the lab. That's that's the old front and the door. It kind of was like a really nasty way to get in, and uh, I, I rebuilt it and put a put a nice solar power. The very first solar power panel at Warner Brothers was on top of the photo lab's entrance. And we used to laugh because wow. it, it provided enough power for my lava lamp in my office. So <laughs> That is funny. And you're saying before that you don't, you know, the nostalgia side of things. I was, I was in my fridge this morning and I've still got two packets of, you know, two, two, two 10 packs of um, TCN 400 in there. Uh -huh. um, and it's kind of like, oh, do I want to really put one? Oh yeah, so so, so got some. yeah, so 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 I still I still got some film. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on, show us again. Oh, oh show yeah. us again. I, I still got some film. Oh yeah, Fuji. One twenty oh, roll. Asia Fuji one hundred. It expired in two thousand. <laughs> you know what? It's probably still good. Yeah, <laughs> that's a classic. Yeah, I mean, because I've got it up on the up in here. I've got my Nikon collection, and I've got you know. Um, and nick about ft2s uh -huh. and all sorts of stuff the only thing i don't have is an s which uh i can't afford an s <laughs> uh, I, my but, first, um my first nikon was an f2a actually oh really yeah oh well, there you go that would have been um ooh, 19, probably 83 or 84 right? 77 is when i bought that for an fa 78 yeah the very first fa's wow yeah I didn't think they were until the 80s. See, when I was a newspaper photographer, I started in 81 and they gave me an FT2. So that was my first one. Mm -hmm. Then my, my boss took the light meter battery out of it. So I had to uh, so I had to figure out the light for myself. <laughs> so th this is this is the, the Warner Brothers, uh, you know, the water tower, the very archetypal the water very, tower. The photograph of the a very famous lot. Yeah. Very famous. And uh, yeah, I, it is. A little known fact: there, there is actually no water in the water tower. And if what? you ever, if you ever watched the animated series The Animaniacs, did you ever see The Animaniacs? Yep. And that explains how Yakko, Wacko, and Dot were in the water tower because there's no water in the water tower. That's how they were locked <laughs> up in there. Oh my gosh, that's gold! 
George Lucas. So we, the Warner, unknown to a lot of people, the Warner Brothers Photo Lab did work for all the studios, not just Warner Brothers. We yeah. We worked for everybody. And in this case, we worked for Fox. And on Fox, we did a lot of the promo stuff for, um, this is, uh, revenge. I think this is the, the third of the of the of the yeah, Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, yeah, with with Lawrence Fish. I mean, uh, with um, what's his name? I'm brain dead now, but George. And, and so, so I love this because this brings me back to my youth, you know, and watching Star Wars in the theater. And now here I am actually working, you know, on these films. And so it comes full circle for me for you know, being a you know, youngster and and loving you know, motion pictures and movies. So. Yeah, I know. It's pretty cool, isn't it? That um, so many of us started um, working in the film industry because of our love of going to movies and that as kids. And and uh, it's just, you know, it's amazing. Now, you're famous for one of your quotes about um, what's frozen into your mind is is the image that came from the still photographer. It's not necessarily what you saw in the movie. It's an image like this or... Yeah, there's... there's you know, a I mean, there's a classic. Baby. Yeah, there's a classic thought that it that m more people will see these publicity images more than likely than will ever see the film itself. And yeah. some people will will see the film, but remember the you know that that image of of that still of the publicity shot, the one sheet, um, and it's 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 very very powerful. And and I I have the, the the images from Million Dollar Baby because I learned some stuff from Clint Eastwood in this. Um, Clint used to, or at least from what I heard, and this isn't direct, but I'm going to paraphrase, yeah. that he enjoyed pools of darkness in his photos, in his, his filmmaking. He worked not just with light, he worked with darkness and shadow and absence of light. And to me, that was like this you know, revelation from a filmmaking standpoint that I, I really like that because I, I do that as a still photographer. You're, you're working with, with dark shadow areas and light areas and, and to, to know that, that he would purposely make things dark in places to change the way you saw something. So very interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. Storytelling through, through the layering of the light. It's, um, it's a powerful medium light, I tell you. It's um, I have to agree with you 100% on that. And uh, you know, I mean, he's a brilliant filmmaker, isn't he? Yeah. Here's here's a classic. Mm -hmm. This is a great example. Yes. Yeah. And and that's what I was getting at. Where you know, when you watch the film, and it it it's, there's there's power obviously in that shadow and 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 the the raking light and the the dark. Um, it it's just powerful, and it's within the film and and. These are, I believe, Mary Wallace shot these, and, and Mary did a fabulous job capturing that feel of, of what Clint was capturing in the film. Yeah, Mary is a wonderful photographer. And um, Merrick Morton, I think, was the photographer on Mer Star Merrick Wars. Merrick did the shots on, the, on the, the Star Wars stuff. Another great legend in, uh, in, our, in our industry. I just hope one day um, I can live up a little bit to what these guys do. I mean, come on. Who shot this? Can you do you remember the photo? I don't, I don't, I'd have to look. I don't know who actually shot this. It's obviously everybody knows Casablanca, but it's yeah. a it's a fabulous shot because it really shows the working relationship on the studio. Um, you know, the, the cameraman, the 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 actors, the light, um, and and the atmosphere going on, which um which I, I, I love and, and you probably encounter it all and people don't know it is that they, you know, there's, there's smoke <laughs> to get that atmosphere. Yeah. yeah, there certainly is. And I love, um, I love the way that d modern DPs are using smoke now coloring it and it bleeds through the image. It's, uh, it's, it's, I love a smoky set. And plus it also brings up the, brings up the ambient light by half to a full stop. So we get to yeah. use more shutter. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That, you have that light bouncing around and wrapping yeah. around stuff. So yeah, then, because our lives are, our lives revolve around shutter speed, you know. It doesn't, everything is like wide open and then you just, you could get rid of the aperture. <laughs> yep, totally, totally. This is a classic, classic shot. 
this was just like an amazing shot when we first saw it and um it it was you know just a fabulous shot it's it's a it's a david james shot and it's just you know it's it's total batman so yeah david has a knack for around this this sort of iconic image that that remains printed into your brain he's um he's one of the original trailblazers that's for sure mm. i'll look at that oh. i love this because no one no one ever sees this so this was a this is this from was, a polaroid right it's from a polaroid and it's it's they were they were doing test shots of the cape and it, it really was about how the cape was flowing and i thought it was a spectacular behind the scenes has nothing specific to do with the with the film other than you can see the people working pulling that cape back and 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 the motion in the cape it's just a, a fabulous it's very very it's a very thin polaroid as we say it's you know there's not a lot of detail in the dark but i just thought it was a fabulous image so i want to print it out on my wall it's amazing it's absolutely i, I love this when i saw it, i try not to look at the images too much I like to bring them up so that we can talk about it and I'm excited about it. Uh, but I stopped at this one and I'm like, and I studied it for a while. I was like, oh, wow. Holy yeah. Batman. Uh -huh. This and is this, great. This is great. This is Aaron Brockovich. And this, this, this has a lot of emotional, this is uh, a photo by Bob Marshak. And Bob passed away of, um, uh, of cancer uh, while filming Motions 12, the, the next one after oceans 11 but he did Aaron brockovich and whenever i see this this was a you know personal image and personal print we did for for bob and it it says so much for for you know Aaron brockovich and julie roberts but for me it it's 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 it says bob marshak which is the photographer oh that's really sweet it's a very emotional thing for me because I, I i know you know he you know he was a wonderful photographer that we work with and and you know when someone you lose someone to cancer like that it it still sticks with you so. Yeah, you've um, you've been around most of the the legend photographers over time too, which is uh, you know, I mean, because photography changed a lot probably thirty years ago in the industry, didn't it? When marketing yeah. did well, become so we, big. we went from you know from from film to to digital. We were doing a tremendous amount of black and white at a certain period of time, and this is slightly before my time. And this pulls out because I had a lot of access to the archives and this is the original uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in the Willy Wonka movie. And it was uh, an image that I don't think you really see very much, but but it's uh, Slugworth or whatever trying to seduce, you know, um, his golden ticket from him and stuff from Charlie Bucket. But yeah. black and white, coming back to the black and white, why black and white? And well, you probably know is like, because a lot of the outlets were black and white still. The newspaper. yeah. newspapers. Uh, and there was a tremendous amount of that. There's another fabulous black and white image that's um, on the lot at Warner Brothers. And this is within, this is around the corner from my lab at Warner Brothers. So it's it's meaningful for, to me and to a lot of people in the lot because you walk past that every single day. <laughs> and to know that people were there in the 30s doing exactly what you're doing it, it is amazing at times. Did you... Did you see when people walk down there? Did you see that image? Oh yeah, oh yeah. In fact, that is a couple, so cool. A couple people have made me, you know, they they've stood in similar spots on the because it looks just like that except for the new cars. <laughs> yeah, right. So like, um, like what everyone did with uh, Abbey Road. Yes. Yep. Yeah. There's a few shots on on the on the lot that are you can find where you know where James Dean or where in this case you know um you know an old star from the 30s was standing and you could see the whole the whole lot because it hasn't changed yeah i loved it when i went there i don't often get over there for meetings in the early days of my career i had to to um you know to just get in people's heads and, mm -hmm. and stuff but fortunately now i don't have to head over too much but this is harry potter right harry potter harry potter was a big part of my life because we you know we we worked all those years on all the various harry potters um lots of different photographers over the years uh, photographing and it just got you know better and better and better and we uh we watched the the cast you know grow up you know from in front of our eyes every year after year and i just like this shot of of everybody together 
Dumbledore's army, I believe, is what what it was called within the film. <laughs> and oh yeah, yeah, right. And I love the bad boys. It's like you know, Draco Malfoy. It was like I did a show at the Academy a number of years ago, and this is one of the images I I picked out of Harry Potter for the for the show because everybody's looking at all the other stuff, and I'm like, no, the bad boys really make this. <laughs> oh, they do. I agree with you there. And, and there he is. Now this is a. Uh, this is another photograph that was in the lab for many, many years. And this is uh, Robbie Coltrane as uh, Hagrid. <clears throat> and Murray Close was the photographer. And, and Robbie grabbed the camera from, grabbed Murray's camera and took a picture of Murray. Uh, I've been threatening, well, I've been after Murray for years. And I want to see the picture from the other direction, which I never saw. Yeah. It, was a, it was a personal shot um, that and he, he did. He shot a picture of Murray. But... This is like, you know, it's Hagrid and you know, it's Harry Potter, but he's got a camera <laughs> and it was in, know, our be... in our lobby. And it was just to me, it was it was photography, it was movies, it was it was cameras, it was everything. It was Harry Potter. So I love this that. is really I have to say that I hadn't clicked to it. There was my quick scan through it. Um, because I looked at this image first, which yeah. is where it is, and I thought, "Oh, that's really cool. That, that's in your in the that's in the lab, in the right? Lobby. Yeah, in the lobby." And um, that that's funny that it went completely out of my head, head yeah. with the <laughs> with the camera. Is it yeah. a Leica? I no, think it might be a Leica. I, I don't remember now. I have to look closely at it. But I mean, it looks like a Leica. Murray, Murray shoots with Leicas, so I think that yeah. probably was a Leica. Yeah. So, what's this what, one? What's this? This is. The the lab sat next to the staff shop, which is the staff shop is who made all of the plaster casts for when you had a gargoyle on the side of the building. Yeah. You had this and that. They actually made, they had a cast of a reproduction of the Maltese Falcon um, from, from, ah. uh, from the Maltese Falcon. And um, I actually still have that, that particular plaster cast. Uh, it's not, from the original, but it's a reproduction that was made sometime, I think, in the '60s. It's a photograph of mine that that I shot within the staff shop. So, oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah we've got some of your photos image. down the track. You do some beautiful, beautiful fine art work. Uh, this is one of the classic images of all time, really. Yeah, this was um, just at at this point. You know, we had no idea what was going on with uh, you know with 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 this film and the Joker, um, yeah. and it, it it just became you know why so serious and that whole kind of campaign. This is an early shot that uh, a promo shot that um, Stephen Vaughn shot, and uh, it's it, it was just a a powerful image, and it's been used in a number of things. Great photographer, Stephen, and. You know, I mean, people watching this probably don't know any of the names that you're talking about, but mm -hmm. the photographers that you are talking about are amongst, if not the most published photographers on the planet. Oh, yes. Yeah, if you really look at that and figure out it's, you know, here, it's in India, it's in, you know, Poland and Mumbai and all over the place, and those images are everywhere to, to promote and to sell this the film. It, it's quite amazing. Yeah, and especially someone like Stephen and, you know, David James and Merrick who have uh, worked on, you know, massive films over the years, uh, you know, to tally up where their – or how many sets of eyes have seen their images is uh, oh, yeah. quite and a it, number. Yeah, quite a number. And one of the one of the things that, that have always been – oh, this is the uh, um, – Oh, don't let me distract you. Oh no, no! I'll, I'll find a better image to tell you what my story. I got a story to tell, but this is. I did a number of uh, shows, and and so I've I've been I dug through the archives at Warner Brothers, and and this is uh, obviously from Superman, and this is the old days of, of film, and and we actually used to number the negatives with with a, a pen. We'd actually number the negative. They used to do it big time when there was a four by five or an eight by ten. Yeah, uh, you got a lot more real estate to write, but but this, we used to write on it. Um, well, I've got a little secret to tell you. Uh huh. And and I got into trouble by, you know who, but um, we <laughs> with Matrix, 
because I wanted to do an edit and get rid of the ones that I didn't want anyone to see, I used to hand number every transparency. So every transparency that you saw from that Uh was me hand numbering it so that I could get rid of (laughs) the images that I didn't want to have anyone see. And, um, and then my friends and I would shoot them with BB guns and do our kills that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, we used to, yeah, we used to cut stuff up for for people, and and you know we, things would disappear, and they were really bad shots. They weren't, we weren't getting yeah. things that were, were 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 you know, oh my god, this is you know, but but my my story my story on that has to do with um, you know you don't know in the future who that actor may become. <laughs> yep. And yep. those images that you shot that were not picked and turns out this guy became famous one day. And William Shatner is a perfect example, early Twilight Zone stuff. It's like, you know, oh my God, this guy, I didn't know this guy was going to become super famous. I know. And sometimes you do it on set too. Like Michelle Monaghan, she was in um, one of the Bourne films with me. Uh-huh. And um, I only, I shot like, 10 frames of her or something because she was just behind a computer and it was a nice shot and then there she is two years later in mission impossible three is like you know this massive star and i'm like gee i'm really lucky that i shot that (laughs) yep i've seen that a lot yep and and zach snyder and and the whole this this is another this is another relationship with uh with photographer producers where the producers were very keen on what images, uh, not what images should look like, but but were they were there with us all the time between uh, yeah. uh, the the whole production company, the still photographer Clay Enos. There was a back and forth, and that I think any of the relationship I'd say with the Zack Snyder films were like he was very very much into the way everything would look, all the way down to the those publicity images, the look. So that's what this tell this reminds me of that, that, that the in, the input that we had from them, tremendous. Yeah, Clay, Clay's had a wonderful um, collaboration with, with Zach. And I mean, Clay is, um, Clay is one of the photographers that I really look up to in the, in the uh, action hero uh, genre. And, uh, you know, he's, to anyone that doesn't know, he's the DC king. And, you know, not the only one, obviously, but um, he does a lot of DC films and has this massive following on his Instagram from all the DC fans. And, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's one hell of a photographer. He, he would, he would somehow convince everybody to pose for his camera and he'd shoot, he shot everybody, uh, the guards, the, you know, everybody dressed up, you know, not the extras yeah. per se, but all those sub characters, he photographed everybody as portraits also and you probably we i think there's some in some of his books and they're in some of the books but there's a tremendous amount of stuff that's not always seen that's that's wonderful about film well that's that's the sad thing and i hope one day that um the images more images do get picked up from you know especially historically and you know maybe even to the point that uh they collaborate with the the original photographers and put some books out that yeah shows what went behind some of these amazing films that you know still stand up today and you know the pop culture flat out right so yeah i mean there's a a big thirst i know with with my insta the second i put any um behind the scenes images up people go nuts over it and it's really nice to be able to tell a bit of a backstory to it and then for them it's almost like them being able to look at the image from the actor's position you know like looking out of the tv or the cinema my 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 classic example of that once i started working in in the business and i would go to a film and i'd be watching the film and i go oh if the camera would only pan over another 20 feet that way you'd see me because i'm standing right there (laughs) yeah it's so true is this avatar (laughs) is this from avatar this is from avatar and again Warner Brothers, I was working at Warner Brothers, but we did uh, a lot of work for Fox and we did all the work for uh, for James Cameron and John Landau on Avatar with Mark Film and the still photographer and beautiful stuff. Mark is currently doing all this stuff on, on the new Avatar stuff. Uh, oh, fabulous. So we we had to keep a lot of secrets <laughs> for quite a while on the yeah, Avatar. Yeah. And that's the you other know, it's thing. funny. 
it's funny because the second I see that color grade on there, um, I knew it was Avatar. It mm -hmm. was um, so that you know talks about what you're saying before goes in deeper to what you're saying before is that you can tell an image from a movie by even the color palette. Yes. Oh yes, for sure. Uh, uh, Frank Massey, right? Frank Massey, <laughs> and this we we had no clue on this movie. It was just this fun movie and. And Frank did this, and we're like, oh, my God, this is like this Vegas thing. <laughs> and, I think Frank's uh, lucky to have got out of that one alive. Yes. we. At the end of the film, there's a whole sequence where you see the shots from the camera. Well, Frank yeah. actually shot all of those, and they were kept super secret. And they, were, no one was allowed to see them until after the film came out. <laughs> That's but it classic. Was, it, it was it was it was a, an amazing you know fun film and then it just blew up. It was like oh my god, this is everywhere. So I love those films. They're me. I've been in those. I've gone through my phone. Where was I? <laughs> now oh, this, look at that. This is actually a James Dean photograph. One of James Dean's. This is James Dean did was the photographer. Wow. And this is an image. Is it, in, it looks like it's in ADR or something like that. Yeah, it's it's flags and a number of other things, um, yeah. but it's um, is a series of images that <clears throat> Steve Newman uh, helped me with the uh, uh, big show that I did at the Academy, and Steve actually found these at the USC Warner Brothers archive, and that's where oh. we found all kinds of negatives of, of Deans that he shot, and we found paperwork, and that's where we found out that he did all his his work at the Warner Brothers Photo Lab. Oh, that is so. That's that is so cool. This is another James Dean shot, um, a little bit like uh, the Eastwood stuff, where Dean was working with with darkness and 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 the light, you know, flapping through on the, the portrait of the of the person. So, a uh, fabulous image, and and I love it. Yeah, they um they love their shadows, you know, Hitchcock and all that in the old days. This is classic too. Same same sequence, another James Dean shot where he was on stage and and, and photographing and uh love the shadow and uh and I, I think he was a you know a very accomplished, you know he, he had an artistic vision, he wasn't just snapping. So yeah, yeah was doing yeah, just perfect. finding little things like that as it, you know, the silhouetting in the in the uh, stage door there, it's classic. Mm -hmm. This I love. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, I got a Batman kind of, well, that's that whole, the whole Warner Brothers thing. But this was, uh, this is, I believe, another Murray Close shot. But I just thought it was so funny to see Batman. This is Michael Keaton. And this is the, uh, the original, um, you know, Tim Burton Batman. I just thought it was so funny to see, see him looking through the camera. I know Batman lining up the shot, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, I love Murray's work. Oh, uh, look at that! So this is another classic shot from the archive of uh, of the from the Exorcist, and this is the entire frame. So you can see how well composed and how you know how powerful an image this was. And uh, this was used in a in a show at the at the Academy um, of Still Photography, uh, and that was a image I found within the archive that I thought was beautiful. That is beautiful. Oh my gosh! Uh, now I had Barry on last week. Ah, He's going. He, <laughs> he um this now Barry is one of those guys that um he's my conscience actually. <laughs> he keeps me in shape. If there was anyone that I sort of emulate in style, it's him because mm -hmm. he doesn't do setups. His is just live action, boom in your face. This is the shot. I'm telling the story, and here it is. Right? Yes. Oh yeah, and it's just. It's just incredible, and and I work again. I worked with Barry for a long, long, long time. Ever before I met him, the same with you, and and some some amazing stuff, you know, just constantly. Um, and it's just it's, this is Goodfellas. If 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 you know somebody doesn't recognize it, um, and Joe Pesci, and just <laughs> just a powerful. There's a lot of things going on there with a you know a lot of direction, a lot of you know. Uh, the hands and the heads and the looks and and it's yeah. you know bringing your eyes around and there's the money and it, it, there's a lot of stuff going on in. Yeah, you can sit there and look at that image for a long time and you know it's it's you know back to what you were saying about about the still photographers. You know, here's a quote of yours: "A still photographer is the one person on the set thinking about marketing your motion picture from day one." That is a hundred percent true. 
Oh, totally. The, and, and one of the big, I was going to say this earlier, but one of the big things to remember is that everybody says, well, why don't they just pull it from the film? You know, take it from, from, <laughs> from the movie, from what? And I'm like, but the guy making that is making a motion picture. He's yeah. doing movement. And the still photographer is not, he has to translate that movement into a still image that's going to sell your feature in that one still image. And it's not the same as just yanking it from, from the film. Yeah. Um, and that's why a, a tremendous, and it may not even actually be from the camera's point of view. I don't even remember yeah. if this is from the camera's point of view, but it doesn't matter. No, no, you just got to find an image that tells the story for the, you know, for the whole, you know, you have an image that tells the story for the whole movie, and then you break it down to an image that tells the story for a, for an entire scene. And, um, you know, I've seen, uh, I'm not going to name any films, thankfully not, not mine, but I mean, I get the under, I get how we do frame grabs now with all the CGI heavy films. This is the old Department of Portraiture, which was the connected to the photo lab back in the 20s and early 30s, um, where the photographers actually worked for the studio and, and would go out and, and actually shoot on set and stuff. Um, oh, I would have loved to have been a studio photographer in those days. And it, That's and a classic. This, I don't have a shot here, but if you're familiar with George Harrell, who's a very famous Hollywood photographer, uh, George had an office in, in, in this building, I believe, in the Department of Portraiture uh, for a period of time at, at Warner Brothers. He worked at Warner Brothers for a few years. That is so cool. Uh, training day, right? This is a uh, training day. And just, again, some, some powerful images. This is um, um, Merrick Morton. Um, just just right in there and and um love the photography love the yeah i love angles like that just a little bit um three quarter back good stuff troy troy this is our uh with the my my, my thing with troy was that um you know we we did a lot of the, obviously brad pitt and 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 brad is is wonderful to work with and and later on 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 the oceans films um you know, he was always there and very, very nice. And uh, my remembrances of this is that after Troy was done, um, they made 300 and they used all the, the props and stuff from Troy to make 300. <sighs> this is, um, Bailey shot this, right? And yeah, I believe so, yes. And um, Simon, Hutch Simon Hutchin Smith, he was uh, second unit on, so, the, on this film. Yeah. Some nice stuff and and you know sort what are the sword and sandal type thing, but for me, and Brad's it, quite a photographer too, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, you know, this is my favorite film of all time. <laughs> Perfect storm. Yep. Was, oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many times I've seen this. This was shot on stage sixteen at Warner Brothers. Believe it or not, uh, stage sixteen has a has a water tank, a gigantic water tank. And they they filled it with water, and the Andrea Gale, the whole ship was in the stage on the water, sitting on a gimbal, so they could rock the boat, wrapped in green screen and screen and big rain machines, so they could rain and they could wave and 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 it was this is like around the corner from where the lab was. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, here's another shot of it. And this was film days too, by the look of it, right? Yes, I, I believe so. Right at right on that borderline between going from film to from digital, you know, from film to digital. Yeah. Wow. Well, for me, it's oh, memory. Hey. Oh, and it's you. <laughs> you put one of mine in there. Yes. <laughs> yes, I put one of yours. I hope I didn't force you to do that. Oh no, and I found this before before you even know, because you were like, you know, oh, don't I've got money for you, Greg. If you put oh no. Um it's uh again the matrix was a was a big film for it be you for, got my paypal right <laughs> yes this is actually two and three which was really funny yeah. on the lab it was for anybody that doesn't know uh, the matrix second film and the third film um they were shot at the same time mm -hmm. and we got everything as two and three and, and every form we had and everything we had just said two and three and yes. Jess Garcia, the, the 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 publicist on it, it was just, you know, he needed something from two and three or from two. And sometimes we didn't know what was from two and what was from three. <laughs> Jess was the um, studio editor. Yes, yes. 
Yeah. Now this this is a this is a story actually because this is the very first um, take of the very first shot on the very first day of um, Matrix uh, two and three. Wow. And I remember turning around to the directors, the Wachowskis, and going, "Oh, I can go home now. I've got your poster." <laughs> and um, and it was it was used as a standee everywhere. Yes. And um, we only did one take of this because Bill Pope, our wonderful DP, um, turned the light off in the back because it was it, written in the script. It was Morpheus comes through a dark tunnel and all you can see is crocodile eyes. And that was the crocodile eyes of his. Uh, I can still remember it in the script. That was the crocodile eyes in his uh, in his glasses. And so, yeah. So that was the only take that we did, and that wow. was them before walking through. They were just standing there, and as you can see, you know, Neo's arm has got a little bit of movement through it, and Trinity stretching, but it still works. Yeah, that's funny. Ah, there's the team. This is the SMPSP, the Society of Motion Picture Still Photographers. Um, this is a, a group meeting in, in sometime in the fall, I think, and uh, a bunch of us there. Um, yeah, that was the annual annual meeting in January of yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I was there with everybody, so a lot That's of print swap. Yep, the print swap. Yeah, I love those guys. Now this this harkens back to my old days. So yeah. this is a Polaroid of me and Winona Judd. No way. Yes. I thought you were I, an actor. I was the assistant photographer on Winona and Naomi, the Judd's very first photo shoot for their very first album. Their and so you music, were the lighting stand-in? Yep. The music, their, their music had not come out yet. <clears throat> and they had, uh, I think it was RCA Records that hired Norman Seif. A uh, famous rock and roll photographer, uh, Norman, to shoot the, you know, shoot the, the Judds. And so here I had a Polaroid, test Polaroid, you know, 35 millimeter, shoot one, shoot another, you know, got yeah. me in there, got one of Winona. And, uh, and, and so, of course, I have Norman Seif's signature. I don't have the Judd signature. <laughs> there were nobody to me at that point. Yeah, right. No one knew who they were going to be. Nobody. They were photographers. They were <laughs> Photographer's signature is hard to get anyway. Yeah. Uh, this is, is this Minority Report? This is a Minority Report. And this was just this very, very, like, you know, unusual kind of pose that, that became very, very popular with them. They used it for a number of things in the film. And, uh, yeah, no, it's classic. Just, you know, um, again, Tom Cruise stuff. We, we love Tom. Tom's done a lot of stuff with, you know, a lot of different films over the years that, that I've worked on. And, and you know all of his stuff has always been good and and uh i think he's been good to all of his photographers too so yeah i did mission impossible 2 and um a portion of three in china and um he uh he's great i love him i don't think there's a job on a film set that he couldn't do himself to tell you the truth and mm -hmm. they, they use as you as you're aware um the profile tom's profile is what they use mostly Yes, which is um, which is really cool. Is that Marty? That's uh, that's Martin Scorsese. This is a it is Cooper shot. Yes, uh, this is from uh, uh, The Departed. Uh, uh, again, a fabulous black and white portrait of Scorsese. Very, very Scorsese with the gun behind him and the glasses and the look. A, a great, a great image. Yeah, there you go. You yep. see another profile. Yep, in profile. I think one of the only ones that I've seen him, one of his posters is uh, Last Samurai, which I was so jealous uh -huh. of. Oh my gosh! When I saw that photograph, it's like, damn, that's that's the one. That's one of the photos that I wish that I had have taken. And David James. Yeah, there's been a lot of. Uh, that's yeah. it. Yep, that's it. Um, David did a number of of shots and. Um, we really learned the power of the raw file doing doing this with David. What happened was was David had done some previews to show the directors and to show everybody, show Tom. And 
they were saved as you know big jpegs and stuff well they were so yeah. good that they they wanted to use them for you know for the publicity and we were able to and the design firms were able to go back to those original raw files reproduce the looks that had been created by david is in, in in his processing and and then maintain all that sharpness to, to, to go big with it and stuff and that was this is the the reason this is in here this is the point where i really really learned the power of uh, of the raw file and the ability to go back to that raw file you know to suck more data out of it i underexpose my um my raw files am i doing the right thing or would you rather it overexposed well no i mean uh i, I want a full range I, you know i want everything um Depends on the scene, obviously, you know? Yeah. So. I underexpose because um, shooting action, I want, I need as much shutter speed as I possibly mm -hmm. can get. So, um, and, and also with the, with the Nikons, they, when it goes to Photoshop, they, which I'm sure that you've noticed, uh, they seem to be three quarters of a stop down. Right. So it's, it's really weird. Like it'll be, you know, like, oh, my, any, my NEF will be how I imagined it in NXI and the Nikon software, but as soon as that I open it in ACR and Photoshop, that it's um, it's a half to two thirds of a stop down. There's a there's a bit of secret sauce within the Nikon that 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 Adobe doesn't always have, and I'll even say that with Canon and and Fuji. Fuji has been tremendously producing beautiful JPEGs out of their stuff that are difficult to achieve. And it's like they're doing some special stuff. And, and Nikon has, has traditionally done that with a lot of their yeah. stuff, beautiful stuff. The reason he, this is here is we talked earlier about this is this shot uh, of the. Do you, want, do you want me to go to the next one now? You can go to the next one. Maybe we can go back and forth. So this is the yeah, shot yeah. on the poster. And the next shot is actually how it was shot. Yeah. And they flopped it. But in the film, it's all filmed from behind. You don't see this at all in the movie. No way. It is not seen in the movie. They they're shooting them walking away down this 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 roadway, and and this again, still photographer being in the spot. I can't sell this movie if I don't see these actors' faces. So Stephen's out front, and he gets this, and and it becomes the poster, and it's not in the yeah. film. I mean, not that view and that look, that, that at all. So, well, that that one image paid for his entire wages on that film. I mean, oh yeah, and then and then you know, they, that's that's that shows the worth of a still photographer right there. Right. So and I so think the crew must have been over to the left. Part of the reason, yeah, part of the reason I think that it was flop had to do with names on the on the poster. I believe that Dustin Hoffman's name was contractually required to be first and Tom Cruise second. And that's well, that, there you go. That's why it was but most specifically I remember is the fact that it, you know, in the film it's it's filmed from the other side of them. So yeah, wonderful film. Oh my gosh. But oh, oh this is the shot back when I did the This is the Judds. This is the Judds. Yeah. This is the shot that that uh Norman Seif shot that I was the assistant on. So what an incredible photographer. Oh my gosh! And, and it and it tell you this one. This, I'm 22, 21, 22 years old, and I'm in this studio in Nashville, Tennessee, and I've been hired as Norman's assistant. And Norman comes up to me, and he puts his arm around me. I'm 21 years old. Yeah. Says, Greg, how would you like this? <laughs> oh my God! And so, <laughs> I don't want to write it. That's a classic. And then, and then the, he was shooting Nikon uh, FMs, I believe, at the time with an MD11 motor drive. He had two of them. And he would shoot. And then he would hand me the whole camera. And I'd hand him another one already loaded. And I'd rewind the film, pull it out, put a new roll in. And by the time I did all that, he was ready to hand off. That is so cool. He, me, he goes, Greg, he says, you know how I get, you know how I get the shot? I go, no, Norman, how do I get, how do you get the shot? He says, I get all the shots. <laughs> 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 
shooting the motor drive. Boom, 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 boom. And I could barely keep up with him. And in, in a confession, I actually popped the back before I rewound on one roll. So I know I exposed three or four. What did you do? Did you put it in your pocket? Or did no, you lay it? Did you process it? I worked in labs, so I knew I only ruined I only ruined three or four frames. I didn't roll the ruin the whole thing. So that's it, gold. It was, he was shooting so much that nobody noticed, but oh uh, that was a scary day that I had to light the, the scene for this rock and roll photographer who's very famous. And I did, I ended up I you know, I had to light it. <laughs> it's beautiful lighting, gotta say. It was funny. And I and I met up with Norman many, many, many years later. So so he's still, you know. That's fantastic. Is he still around? Yeah, yeah, he's in LA, and he's he. We had a studio in Burbank, and he was doing a lot of video stuff. He he filmed a lot of his sessions over the years, and he had been compiling a lot of that stuff into into video assemblage pieces and stuff. Wow. So this is from the same. I, I got your yeah. photos out of or somehow. Stuff. This is from the same scene with Marty before, right? Yeah. Behind the scenes, a little bit of gun. Yeah. You're seeing, you know. Uh, the dark he's black. a powerful man isn't he look at him he's um he's he's got the it factor doesn't he and he knows the image and he knows what he wants and yeah so and, and a bit more training day uh love training day great film right in the streets of new york i mean streets of new york the streets of la and on uh merrick merrick morton shot this and merrick had he was photograph these a lot of the a lot of the people in this film were actually you know, real, real gangsta type. Oh, really? Yes, and and Martin had been had, Martin. Martin had spent many years um, doing a lot of street photography, so he knew a lot of these people. And I'll, I'll get maybe corrected from 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 Rick a little bit, but but he has a lot of street photography that, that he worked for the LA Times and a number of the papers of the gangs and 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 all that. So he got very intimate with a lot of them and. Because of that, he got very intimate with all these in here, and that's where they filmed it with on you know the the director Fuquay. Oh my gosh, that's rad! So oh, people, here we get some of your beautiful work now, right? Um, I do, I do a lot of uh, texture, so I like adding texture uh -huh. to the images. So I shoot, and I love. In the early days, I used to do Polaroid transfers. If you know what a Polaroid transfer was, yeah, did you? Yeah, I did a lot of Polaroid transfers and uh, slip emulsion, and and I love the texture and I love making things. So, so when I finally really got into Photoshop, I found I could do a lot of those things that I I was trying to do with uh, with the Polaroid transfers and stuff. The texture I could add overlays, I could yeah. remove things, and so that's what I started doing. And I still do quite a bit of that stuff. That type. Are of you thing. a wet pipe guy as well? Uh huh. I I have not done very much. Um, recently, but I've taught some classes on on things. This is this is actually from one of my classes on uh, um, doing cyanotypes. Um, and down I, down in the um, down in the about section, we'll we'll put a whole bunch of links, and anyone that's interested in uh, mm -hmm. doing some of your classes and that can um, contact you by email or what it, or yeah. Um, yeah. through your website, right? And, yeah, yeah, and that'd be, that'd be really cool actually because you're. A, wealth of information this stuff is beautiful that's another one ralph nelson's right into his um into doing uh his iphone yes um, he's a lot of flower photography and his iphone photography. photography he's printed a number of books and he's even shot a lot of uh, quite a bit of stuff with a camera that uh an iphone that got wet and uh the sensor is a little funny and it, it produces some fabulous stuff sometimes Oh, so you'd be loving that. Yeah, defects. I love defects and things. And, and this is... This is... I love this. This is beautiful. This What have you... It's like a silver <laughs> or a gold through it, right? What, what this is, is this is a... Um, I don't know, hang on a second, and I probably actually have that print. And I'm not very skilled at this. So what this is... Is this is I'm printing on vellum. If you know what oh, vellum oh, oh, oh. is, vellum is a slightly see-through material. And oh no, I didn't. I'm printing on an inkjet printer uh, on vellum, and then here, I'll show you. You might have to edit my jumping around. 
No, this is great. So this is a piece of vellum, and you can kind of see that you can kind of see through it, see my hand through it. Yeah, right. So what I do is I print on an inkjet printer. I print on the vellum through the inkjet printer. Yeah. And then I put gold leaf on the no back way. of the print. And so it 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 kind of shimmers through on the light, the white areas, and obviously the black areas, you know, and so it's it's you have to really see it in pur purpose uh, in person, but it's it's gilded or gold leaf on the back of the of vellum. So do you sell these? Yes, I, I'm just I'm just doing a batch of them now, and I, and I haven't been, uh, and I do sell in art shows and things like that. And um, but this is a recent, this is a recent image because I, I live in Arizona actually now, um, <coughs> and um, this is saguaro cactus just down the street from where I live. Oh, that's so cool! I love it. So this is the same process. This is um, actually it's a it's it's two layers. So it's a photograph. The lower half is a is a tree, and then that's the moon, and then it was in you know orangey kind of whatever. It's the setting sun was lighting up the clouds, and then it's a wall. I've overlaid a wall that's got peeling paint on top of the image. So that's what the cracks and all the other stuff you see is the peeling paint of the wall. So it's two images together. So not quite a double exposure, but it's an overlay. Um, you little artist, you. So that it, is beautiful. It looks. Some of my stuff tends to look very painterly, if, if that's the you know a proper term. But it's all it's all done photographically, you know. Yeah, always, yeah. It's kind of abstract, and and it yeah. does look like it does look like a um look like a, a painting, like an oil color or something uh -huh. like that. It's, not, it's, it's you know it's, it's beautiful it's how it's aged with that with the wall. How you've done that? That's quite something else. Yeah, that's my whole you life. Know, the, sure. Yeah, and the columns, you know, you can stand there and, and look at that for a long time and read whatever into it you want. You know, it looks like a little bit Easter Island. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually was shot in Sedona, Arizona at a very kind of very Indian spiritual kind of place in Sedona. So oh, there you go. Okay. So looks a bit like out to what is it where Air's Rock is that red rock? Uluru, yeah. Yeah, it has that that kind of look in in Sedona. So that's such a powerful place. Oh my gosh! If you come over here, you, you have to go out there and photograph yeah, that. One of these years, we need to get out. I love it. And See, the, I love this the way that. So, what have you done there? Is that like a lot of tonal contrast or something? And it's a little bit of tonal contrast, and it's it's an overlay. So, I've I've is a texture overlay that's been laid in on top of the image, oh, and that. Wow. Gives it some of the some of the feel of the look, um, and then I used to do a lot of toning, print toning in the old days, where I'd um, shoot on certain papers, um, and certain papers would respond to copper tone, and some other ones where you get these rich browns in the in the in the shadows, and a silvery blue in the in the highlights uh, with a copper tone, and. Yeah. Uh, Rather than people would use selenium toning or sepia toning, but there's a number of other chemical tonings that you could do. So this is kind of a reproduction of that, but going digitally. Um, oh, I love it. Oh, and ah, look. This is an, I I've saved worn. it for last. I'll put it at the very end. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's your image on the wall. Um, that bit of intimidation behind uh, behind my desk, and uh, actually you can see the the the, Walti, the Maltese Falcon. It's actually just white plaster, yeah. not black. <laughs> so, so I helped you with some deals, mate. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. You know, you walk into my office and that's here. pretty cool that you got that um, blown up there. I remember that day. Yeah, I was um, I was doing stretches. I was copying Keanu's stretches, and I was out there. I was joking around. I was like doing the same thing as him, and I go um, and he looked up and I was like, yeah, not bad, not bad, huh? And he goes, yeah. yeah. Not bad for a sixty-year-old, yeah. like twenty-two or something. <laughs> so, yeah. thanks, mate. Powerful image. That, but, um, that's at my office from about two thousand or something. I don't know, something like that. I wonder what happened to that. I got to revisit my matrix work. Actually, it's about time to smash it up on Instagram again with it. I think. Hey, buddy. 
Yes. Yeah, so much for keeping it to uh, 30 minutes, right? Oh. I can never do it. The stories oh. are just too good. And I'll tell you, the stories from, from you about the photographers, um, today's been really special for me, I've got to say, and I have to thank you for uh, for taking the time to come and join me on this. And you got, Van, we could do another 10 of these. I might have to have you on Five Photo Folio and a couple of the other things I do, actually, because oh. the stories are too good. <laughs> oh yeah just scratch the surface there so uh so there you go and i wanted to as the very last thing i wanted to follow up on uh -huh. i want you to have the last word but i want to read this out from a recent article that you did um from a couple of years ago producers often spend more money retouching and fixing bad still photography after the film is wrapped than they would ever have spent hiring a great still photographer in the first place i love that yes it's so true. It's so true. Anything else you'd like to say to the team out there? No, just, you know, if you're uh, uh, wanting to be a still photographer, then go for it. Just keep after it. And if you're shooting now and, and we haven't met, well, I want to meet you. <laughs> oh, that's really out. nice. Uh, any tips that you have for people wanting to break in? Um, well, you know, I'd say shoot as much as you possibly can. And if you can work on any productions, work on as much and many productions as you possibly can. You know, obviously, you know, it's a union situation in the United States and various places, but there's lots and lots of small productions going on and and get out there and shoot. Um, that'll give you the experience of, of being things. And you're much more than a documentarian. You're, you're producing artwork and imagery that will sell that film many, many, many years in the future. So yeah, that's a really good point. And um, you know, like it's quite something for me to look at that image in the background there, and and it's you know it still stands up today, and it is an image that people remember. And you know, that's the, that's our job as still photographers is what you said. You know, to ingrain an image into uh into the minds of people that are watching those films and and um you know one of the greatest quotes i've ever read is you know when you said about that the still photographer is the one person on a film set that is thinking about the marketing of your film from day one and probably before <laughs> true true and i and i think my experience has been the the very good directors dps very good producers totally understand that yeah and they embrace those photographers and and you've seen it they use them again and again and again because they know it it's a major contribution to their their film yeah that's a, absolutely you know 100 percent that you know the uh sign that you're doing the right thing is by being asked back again and and many of the photographers that you sh showed images from today are invited back time and time again with the same people to collaborate with the same filmmakers and you know that speaks volumes for what they're doing in the industry mm -hmm. great stuff there you go hey buddy i'm going to chuck you in the green room and um sign off do you can okay. hang around for a tick sure. so we can have a have a sure. chat a debrief thanks bud so team greg Dyro, right um amazing stories great journey and the collaboration that he's had with photographers through his long and healthy career is uh, pretty cool and I feel uh, extremely honored to be one of the photographers that he's helped nurture along the way and like he said you know he's there for mentoring and and that's what the that's what the great people are all about that's what good humans do so I hope you enjoyed today um, if you could subscribe that'd be really cool and do the bell so you get notified and um, we've got some great interviews coming up and this is a classic so thanks team